Jimmy, uh, very well welcome to you as well. And um, uh, please introduce yourself and let's go. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody, and good morning, or whatever the time is where you are. Uh, my name is Jimmy Botha. I am a pastor in Scotland, and I'm also the communications sponsor here in Scotland. Um, so part of my job is to help the members of our Scottish mission to get all the news or to share the news that they make all over the world and so on. Uh, it's my job to run the website and to do newsletters and things like that. Scotland is a small entity. Uh, we have just more than 700 members in all of Scotland. So we are very much a uh, mission field. So if you ever thought of going for mission, perhaps Scotland is the place where you might also think of going for mission. Now, as, as Pastor Dayan said earlier, next year, the BUC is going to have a, a campery in Scotland. So that may be an opportunity for you to see uh, the beautiful country, which is north of England um, and very different from England, I think. Um, but some people will differ with me. <laughs> Jimmy, I was waiting of how long you're gonna go speak before you say something about England. But <laughs> but I need to concur and say Scottish mission is amazing. It is a small small membership, uh, uh, but certainly uh, certainly um, amazing place, amazing country. So uh, Jimmy, thank you so much for the time that you spent uh, uh, preparing this presentation, and also for your love and investment to our pathfinders. It is, it's so nice to, to, to have pathfinders of our own. We have, a small, we have two small clubs in the two churches that I have, um, but we have, we have a lot of fun together and we um, like to meet up with other pathfinders whenever the opportunity comes. Um, and so, yes, uh, Scotland has about 14 churches. We have seven pastors in Scotland, uh, more than 14, probably 16 churches or so, um, and seven pastors. And so um, we've got our work cut out for us it is not an easy place to work and to share the gospel, um, but it is a great challenge and we enjoy living here and working here. And so, shall I start, Dan? It's about time. Let's go. We are ready. Thank you. Everyone, we can't see all of you, so from time to time it will be nice if uh, you can just send us a message in the, chat, in the chat when you agree with something or if you can wave and stuff like that, that will be useful. That's right. Jimmy, just in case uh, for everybody who is there still in the Zoom room, if you do have a problem with the sound, you might need to log in and log out. Or even sometimes uh, people have to move on a phone. But uh, bottom line, if, if this doesn't work for you, make sure you join us on a Facebook Live. And um, the chat room is now open for everybody to... Uh, also the comments, uh, and we, we love to uh, hear from you. Uh, uh, certainly, if you didn't download your worksheets, I'm going to just post um, uh, the link for the worksheet for you. <clears throat> and uh, Jimmy is our presenter. So, yeah, let's go. Okay, good. So I've got my own, the same exact worksheet open here next to me, and I can see it. And you will see at least for the first 10 slides um, that the worksheet uh, goes exactly almost the same as what the, 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 the screen will be. Now, the first 10, there's basically 10 requirements that we need for this particular honor. And um, I will tell you soon as we're done with the requirements what the definitions are so that you can see exactly what it means to be a media critic. Okay, so being a critic is not necessarily a negative thing. In this case, and what we will be doing this afternoon, it is something very positive and it helps us, it provides us with protection, it provides us with strength um, in this very fast changing world that we're living in. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm going to ask you a little bit later, and I'm, I'm sure the answers will come quick and fast, how many different types of media you keep yourself busy with every day. So the first one, requirement, requirement one, as you can see, um, as a group, create a list of various types of visual media. Uh, you will see just now what it is. And then participate in an in-depth discussion on how varying types of media can be used to spread the gospel of Christ. Present a summary of your discussion to a different group or share your conclusions online. Now, we know that at this time, all of us are separated from one another. We can't see face to face and stuff like that. But this is an, uh, an opportune time for us to create media and things that we can use to share the gospel. Okay, so I'm moving on to the next slide. Um, so read Patriarchs and Prophets, uh, Prophets chapter 41. 
the apostasy at Jordan, the two paragraphs beginning with keep thy heart with all diligence, and then discuss how this relates to visual media consumption and how your senses and your awareness of the surroundings are impacted. Okay, so that is a straightforward uh, task that you will have to do. We will go past that those two chapters and we'll quickly read them and you'll get an idea and I'll give you some more pointers over there. Then uh, requirement number three, compare and contrast the various rating syst uh, systems for the video games, movies and television programs that you have in your area where you live um, and, then uh, and then provide it with the guidance of Philippians 4 verse 8. Now, I just need to say at this point that uh, if you're in America, your rating system might be slightly different than what we have here in the UK, for instance, or it might be slightly different to what it is in Germany or, or South Africa or somewhere else. Uh, number four, discuss the importance of parental involvement in the selection of media. Now you can see this one is straightforward and we're going to ask you to have a discussion, but we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get there. How important it is to have parental involvement or adult involvement when it comes to the selection of media. Number five, discuss the impact of uh, violence in visual media plays in shaping society and its expectations. Now, no doubt today we're going to talk a little bit about violence in the media and how it affects us and, and what it does, okay? Number six, follow the current news for three days and evaluate the sources and accuracy of what has been reported. Evaluate on a scale of one to five where each report falls with one representing pure entertainment and five representing strictly informational news prepare and present your findings to a group. Now, this is going to be an interesting exercise. We'll talk a little bit more about it when we get there, but it's going to need you to watch some news over the next few days. And uh, in the worksheet, you will be able to see there is a table that I've given you there. Um, and I've just put into the worksheet BBC News, Fox News, CNN, and Sky News. That's basically because they are the four main news outlets that we have here in the UK. But you would be welcome to put any of the news outlets that you have locally where you are in that table and, uh, and do that one according, uh, accordingly. When we go to number seven, search the writings of Alan White for counsel on the wise use of time. Select and read the passage discovered during your search. Now, when, the, when you do this exercise, I'm sure all of us are going to have very different uh, little passages that we can find that Alan White tells us how to make best use of our time. And you can see why this is uh, one of the requirements. It is obvious that when we spend time on media, using media, making media, watching media, listening to it, uh, that takes up time and, and, and that could uh, change who we are and what we become and so on. Okay, so we'll talk a bit more about that one. Then comes number eight. Number eight, you will see is a bit longer. It is a bit more involved. It says, keep a detailed record of the amount of time and types of visual media you consume during a four day period. Now this is different from the previous one where it says watch the news for three days. Here you have to do something for four days and then include the following data in your records. A, the amount of time that you spent viewing. B, uh, the media rating and the rating organization if available. In other words, whatever you watched, was there a PG-12 or a PG or something like that on it? Uh, number C, the plot or the theme. So we want to see if you're able to pick up on the plot or the theme of any particular program. Um, because if we're going to be a media critic, we'll see the definition in a moment. It is important to be able to recognize what the plot or the theme is. Because once we can do that, we will know what the agenda is of the particular program maker. Um, number D, 
purity of content versus sexual and or violent themes. So you can see we're going to be touching on these issues of sexual and violent violence in our media. Um, it is very prevalent today and we keep seeing a lot of it no matter where we go. It becomes so part of natural or regular life, isn't it? And then number E, the message that was presented by the media. So for number eight, for the first part, for four days, we want you to watch some stuff and you need to make um, a table. You, you'll see I've put a table in the worksheet for you um, with those particular, uh, with, with these five areas that we want you to concentrate on. Okay. And then when we go to the second part of, of number eight, it says prepare a graph or a chart illustrating your findings. Now, making a graph or a chart is in its own way also a form of media. Um, and we want you, when you make this uh, graph or chart, to use the, the stuff that you've learned today to, to help you enhance that chart or graph. What changes, if any, do you need to make to your viewing habits? So you'll see there's the graph that you've made and you say, oh my, I can see I'm watching too much of this or I'm not really getting too much of that or whatever the case. And then you can decide what changes, if any, do you need to make to your viewing habits? Evaluate how being a Christian should affect your use of media. Be detailed and honest, taking into account what you have experienced in this honor. So share your evaluation in a letter or a report or a journal with a trusted friend or a leader. And if you really want to, in your own local Pathfinder club, you guys can maybe decide even to make a presentation, each of you, to the rest of the club to say, well, this is, uh, we want to make ourselves a little bit vulnerable. Um, we would like to share how we view media and how we, what we think of it and, and how it will change our, our behavior and what we should do. When we come to number nine, uh, view a media presentation with your family. And after viewing, interview your family members using the following questions. So you see there at number nine, um, uh, the questions are stated there as well. Um, and it says, did you find the presentation entertaining? Did you learn anything valuable? Would you watch the presentation again? Why or why not? And did you feel your time was well spent watching that media that you've done together like that? Okay, and then lastly, we get to number 10. Number 10 is create a speech or a presentation or a game that shows what you have learned about the critique of visual media while earning this honor. And then share this with a group or with your club or something like that. Hey, Jimmy, okay, so before we go into the presentation, uh, let's just engage our, our viewers and um, uh, uh, let's pose a question, uh, you know, from top of your head, uh, or, uh, you know, what, which media do you use the most? You know, uh, I guess there is quite a few these days, you know, uh, so why don't post in the uh, chat room or the comment section, uh, which media do you um, uh, use the most? All right. So uh, some comments started flying already in, Jimmy, just to give you some idea before we start. Um, uh, uh, many people, well, are saying um, uh, they're using a lot of YouTube, uh, okay. Snapchat, um, uh, also uh, Netflix, uh -huh. uh, people are using different, well, uh, you'll be surprised. Uh, YouTube is very high there, which is, uh, somebody is using iPlayer, which is a, a more modern version of BBC uh, watching TV. Uh, yes. So uh, it seems to me quite a few people uh, um, are on the social media, but also on a quite a few different platforms. Uh, uh, many people are saying they're on a phone also and TV. So, well, play sta station or whatever. Yeah, well, that's, wow. Some people yeah. using everything. Jimmy. Don't, don't forget platforms like PlayStation and uh, Xbox and all those kinds of things. And, and those were mentioned as well, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, very good. So it is, it is clear that it is prevalent that we use a lot of media. Um, 
first of all, before we go, let's make you clever about this. What is a critic? So you, you, you hear the words, you, uh, we talk about media critic, and, and, and when we say those big words, what does it mean to be a critic? And this is uh, a definition that sounds like it's over my head, certainly. But let's try and make it a little bit understandable. Um, so a critic is a professional. Now, some of us are professional on YouTube. Is that a fact? I think some of us, you know, our parents would come to us and say, how do you do this? And we're professional because we can show our parents how to do this. A critic is a professional who communicates an assessment and an opinion of various forms of creative works, such as Sorry. art, literature, music, this cinema, so there are some spaces at the theater, moment. fashion, so able to live and join architecture, again? and food. So um, you've heard of food critics. Have you heard of a fashion critic or a theater because critic or a cinema critic? It seems to me. Um, so does what they access achieve its purpose? And and the creator's intention. So a, a, a critic is somebody, now in real life we get real critics, professional people who do this for, a, for, for their work, and they will go to cinema or theater or fashion shows, or they will even uh, you know, address architecture and, and stuff like that, and they do it for their work. And what they want to know is that which they are looking at, is it achieving what it was advertised to do? Okay, so critical thinking is the analysis of facts to form a judgment. You say, oh, well, I look at this building. They said it's going to look like this, but I can see some differences. And now I can tell you that uh, maybe this guy who built this or who designed this, he has a flaw here or there. I'm thinking critically about what he has done. Not necessarily negative, but I'm, I'm being factual about what I see. That is a critic. Now, what is media? Um, media, as you can see here on, on the slide, um, I just want to move this away out of my path so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, the, the means of communication as radio and television, newspapers, magazines, and the internet, um, anything that reaches people uh, widely, anything that you know, is used. I mean, you were saying, many of you were saying YouTube just now. I'm using YouTube more in the last two months than I've ever used it before in my life um, because we suddenly have to do church over the internet. And so we're using YouTube for that. And that is a very good platform. It's an easy platform to do things on. So, so I'm going to have a few slides. I'm going to go through a few slides. Um, if, if you can see on these slides, it still says requirement one. We're looking at all the different um, types of media. Now, if you have your worksheet handy, you will see create a list of various types of media. And so the next few slides will just do that. Digital and printed images. Are we talking about photography, graphic design, fashion, videos? And like I said, architectural structures and fine arts, all of these things are types of visual media. I'll, I'm going to show you some examples. Um, you can see, for instance, big billboards there on the, on the top left. There's a nice one that says something about Jesus. It's not good quality, so I don't know what the small print says. Uh, using projectors to, 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 to project images. You all know phones. You've got your own uh, newspapers. They, they, they've be, they're probably the oldest type of media that we've got here. This is a poster. So posters everywhere, they are a type of media. The picture on the bottom here, this is, of course, a computer. Um, and you can see televisions over there. All these different things are visual media, are types of things where we can see, where we can see media. So visual media is what we see with our eyes. Things like photography and video painting and drawing have you made paintings how many of you have made paintings in the past and yeah and that's how, all the question how long does it take you to take to make a painting uh, let's just see jimmy are there any people behind uh, you know with us who today are uh, painting uh, so if you are painting please say yes oh yeah we have we have a uh, at least well I, one comment at the moment they're they're, uh, they're painting okay. and yeah uh, they're saying two 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 and a half hours jimmy uh, for some of the paintings. <clears throat> wow, that's impressive, man. 
Um, I wonder if somewhere uh, somebody can send some of these paintings or pictures of their paintings in and stuff so we can share them. Yeah, that'd be beautiful. Some yeah. people are saying four hours, 20 minutes, depending what they do. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, good stuff. So that's media. Um, um, and so you're busy creating media. Um, myself, I'm a photographer. I have my, my camera with me all the time. Um, I know Pastor Dejan, he, he, he got me into taking photos from the air with a drone um, when, when I wanted to to to, um, to to get my drone approved, I said to the treasurer, I need a tripod that can fly because I need to take photos from a high point. Um, so uh, using our, our, our drones, that's a way of making media, painting and drawing, graphic design. I wonder if we have anybody who, who does graphic design. Yeah, church definitely needs graphic designers for sure. Absolutely. Anybody, uh, if you're doing for the, whichever of these medias you're doing, uh, uh, yeah, just put it down. And how can it be used for your local church? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, uh, many people are saying that they're using uh, different types of, uh, uh, of hobbies. Uh, they, they are, we have graphic designers and web designers, and we have a, a, any, any photographers there? Any photographers? <clears throat> there should be quite a few of you. I would like to see good photographers. We, we constantly need good photos in our churches from the things that we do so we can put those photos on the websites so when people look at our church's websites then they can see people are busy doing stuff they don't want to just know about all the stuff we learn they also want to know that there's individuals people who are actually together and doing stuff and so photos taking photos is vital um there's uh, other things mentioned there on the slide, namely architecture and, and, and fashion and so on. But they, I'm just putting them there because they are types of visual media. Um, uh, all these mediums that, that I've listed here, and then I've only listed four because, I mean, on the slide, you just put so many, but there are so many more. But you get the idea. Hope Channel or 3ABN or Adventist World Radio and so on. These are all entities that we have that can reach people around the globe um, and so when we think of this text in the bible that says um, when the gospel will be shared all the way around the globe then the lord will come we need to try and make use of every possible way that we can to make media that we can bring the gospel with to people that might not be able we might not be able to access because of laws or whatever the case may be and so um, one last slide on types of media. Uh, it says media technology, live streaming broadcasts. What we are doing this afternoon is we're creating media. Um, and what you see on Zoom, even though Zoom doesn't want to work or anything, is still media. Um, and of course, we are recording this. So there will be archived media services and of course, radio webcasting. Now, I know that even if, you, if, you, if you're interested in this, you might be able to go on the internet and you might be able to find hundreds and thousands of different radio stations existing around the world today. Hey, Jimmy, as you were, as you were actually uh, presenting this slide, there was a, quite a few comments which people actually expressed their wish to be part of media as well. So yeah, but there's somebody who said, oh, I would love to be a filmmaker. Uh, uh, <clears throat> others uh, said, oh, I'm a designer, I can do many things uh, for, for church, but also uh, uh, for different entities of well, uh, all together, it seems to me that we are doing. A well done. Well done, guys. We need you. Um, we need young creative minds. Uh, if you ask all the people older than 40 and so on, they will say, well, we know we, we know what the logo of the church looks like. And we know what all the different um, uh, visual things look like. And, and, and when we're older than 40, we start th thinking in a flatter way. But when you're still young like you are, you're able to think very creatively and outside of the box and you're able to think without fear of of new ideas and new um, uh, bright things you know that we we don't always see and so um, as you saw this was the first one we've we've covered the first of the of the 10 um, and you will be worried because it's already half past and we only have one half hour left for the rest but the others will seem to go a bit quicker than the first one um, I think two and three will go slightly slow, but then we'll catch up some hey, speed. Jimmy, just before you go to the point number three, uh, some people are asking questions about, you know, um, the podcast. Does that include, uh, that, is that a part of media? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, uh, and, 
Yeah. Okay. Very good. Thank yes, you. So you can, and you know how to make a podcast. It's basically recording yourself and it goes in a package and it gets put somewhere where people can easily download it um, and so on. Um, uh, we could do a, a, ideas of podcast in another presentation. Now, the second one is uh, read the patriarchs and prophets. And, you know, that was written by Ellen White. Chapter 41, the apostasy at Jordan, the two paragraphs beginning with keep the heart with all diligence. And then discuss how this relates uh, to visual me media consumption and how your senses and awareness of the surroundings are impacted. Now, um, so, so to start with, I'm just going to move this around. I want to see if I can get this out of the way. Yeah, there we go. So I'll quickly read it. Simply, that's all we do. Keep the heart with all diligence is the counsel of the wise men for out of it are the issues of life. Proverbs 4 verse 23. As man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23 7. The heart must be renewed by divine grace or it will be in vain to seek for purity of life. He who attempts to build up a noble, virtuous character independent of the grace of Christ is building his house upon the shifting sand. In the fierce storms of temptation, it will surely be overthrown. David's prayer should be the petition of every soul. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Psalm 51.10 And Having become partakers of the heavenly gift, we are to go on unto perfection, being kept by the power of God through faith. First, P uh, First Peter 1 verse 5. Then the second paragraph, yet we have a work to do to resist temptation. Those who would not fall a prey to Satan's devices must guard well the avenues of the soul. They must avoid reading, seeing, or hearing that which, that which will suggest impure thoughts. The mind should not be left to wonder at random upon every subject that the advers uh, adversary of souls may suggest. Girding up the loins of your mind, says the Apostle Peter, be sober, not fashioning yourselves according to your former lusts in your ignorance, but like as he which called us, uh, which called you is holy, be ye yourselves also holy in a manner of living. First Peter. Paul says, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Philippians 4, 8. This will require earnest prayer and unceasing watchfulness. Now, uh, Patriarchs uh, and Prophets, uh, Pro uh, Prophets uh, chapter 41, uh, the, last bit, the, the, the last bit of the second paragraph, we must be aided by the abiding influence of the Holy Spirit, which will attract the mind upward and habituate it to dwell on pure and holy things. And we must give diligent study to the word of God, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed here to according to thy word. Thy word, says the psalmist, have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So is the Bible, by the way, quick question, you all need to answer this. Is the Bible media? How is it going? Oh, the let's have a look. Is the Bible media? It's a question for everybody there. Please make sure you put it in the comments. Yes. Oh. All right. Uh, people are saying yes. Yes, it is. Absolutely, yeah. it is. And the Bible can influence how we live, doesn't it? Uh, let's just check that. Can the Bible influence how we live? Make sure you put it in comments for us so we can see. I can tell you, Jimmy, because we have uh, two uh, platforms, it takes a little bit of time to get <laughs> to Facebook. Uh, so Facebook is saying yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's a print media. It's a media. And also here, excellent stuff. And the Bible, of course, you can hear it and you can see it. They've made videos of it. They've made all sorts of things. Now, just the slide that I've got on at the moment, um, just the two things on the bottom there. Um, uh, how does this relate to 
visual media consumption um, and how are we impacted. Ellen White uses several biblical passages to remind us that our thoughts become who we are. We must guard our hearts, our thoughts from unholy things, since Satan will use everything he can, including visual media, to distract us and to destroy us, okay? Um, and then as for our senses, what's our senses? Taste, feel, touch, uh, feel is touch. Taste, touch, see, hear, smell. As for our senses, a large screen, such as those found in a movie theater combined with loud volume can subdue the senses of attentiveness, rendering a person unaware of their immediate surroundings. Okay, so that you can be influenced by media um, fairly readily. Okay, I'm moving on to number three, requirement number three. Um, compare and contrast the various rating systems for video games, movies, television programs with the guidance that is provided in Philippians 4 verse 8. Now, if you look at the worksheet, you can see there is the questions stated there as well. But I've included the websites where you can find these different rating systems. Um, now, in the UK, this is what we have. Um, and so they call the PEGI ratings. Um, and I will go quickly through all of them. You see there's a 3 and a 7, a 12, uh, parental guidance, then a 16, and then an 18. Now, you can also see they are color-coded in the UK, and that should be uh, there to help us to quickly know when it is good or not good, or dangerous or not dangerous. Uh, usually, when it is red, what do we do? Stop. When it is green, okay, you can go. So, what do we have? Green. Uh, when it's like this, number three, suitable for all age groups, there will be some violence in a comical context or child-friendly setting um, is accepted, um, as is nudity when showed in a completely non-sexual uh, manner, such as breastfeeding. Now, just before I go any further, let me just say, um, we're going to come to a point where we realize what it is that we have in front of us here. This is the systems that we as humans have made for us to try and, and let us as humans be safe when we watch stuff. But you can see already in this one, it says some violence in a comical context or um, some nudity when it is something that is not bad. I don't know, uh, you know, uh, not threatening, okay? When we go to seven, same as number three, but, but contains some possibly frightening scenes or sounds. A little more violence is permissible at, at this level. Um, it is always unrealistic and often directed towards fantasy characters, um, though very mild non-realistic violence to humans may also feature. Implied violence, for example, the bombing of a city where violence is not seen directly can sometimes happen, okay? Um, and then I'm not going to read through the whole of that. I'm just going to highlight some uh, parts of it. Um, I just want to move this thing away again. So more detailed and realistic looking violence toward fantasy characters is allowed in this level 12. Some bad language can be allowed, but it can no, be no more than mild swearing. Now, in whose house is mild swearing allowed? And what? who makes the definitions for those? And so... Uh, and also games may provide some instruction on casino style gaming and for example they can feature an explanation of the rules of blackjack or poker and stuff like that and also at this level may feature horror content such, uh, such as strong threat um, and so on um, some injury details so this is 12 you can already see that in a 12 there is already stuff that some of us might not even feel comfortable with. And Jimmy, as you got the question, you know, in, in whose house mild swearing is allowed, I can tell you that uh, our viewers are reacting on a chat and a comment section, and they're saying, well, no, not in my house. <laughs> so Very good. Yeah, so it seems to me that it seems to me somehow that, uh, well, uh, well, there is a concern here for sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You can already see this, see this man-made thing uh, has issues. In, the, in this one, uh, when it comes to games, in addition to the numeric ratings, you also have this parental guidance. Um, and this serves as a warning that uh, these apps can offer a broad variety of user-generated or organized contents. And um, so you'll see on stuff like Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, and other social media, this kind of thing. When you do, be careful. 
okay? At level 16, you can expect to see more mature and realistic violence. The game may deal heavily with, heavily with death and injury to humans. Sexual acti activity can be shown, but it must not include visible genitals. This is very interesting. And then lastly, uh, the worst form of bad language can be heard and will often in include sexual expletives. So you can see when it says 16 already, you are in deep um, area of um, you know, stuff that we would not like, that we would not feel comfortable with. Um, I almost don't even want to read number 18 because it's just going even further and it allows everything else. It allows tobacco and alcohol and sexual activity to the worst level that you can you know, find on any media. Um, and so, so I'm not going to spend plenty of time reading number 18 for you because um, I'm, I'm not expecting you to want to go in and test those, those boundaries. Um, yeah. So... Basically, and th those were for games, for, for movies, this is what you get. And I've uh, summarized movies much quicker. When it is a uh, green U, it's suitable for everybody. PG, parental guidance, 12, uh, for 12 and over. This is for cinema release, and this is for video release. Uh, number 15 is for 15 and over, 18. And of course, R18 is for is really bad stuff. Now, all of these, they have the same uh content as what we read for the games so the stuff you could expect inside games you will expect inside these levels as well now remember the question is asking we need to compare this with philippians 4 verse 8. philippians 4 verse 8 says finally brethren whatever things are true whatever things are noble whatever things are just whatever things are pure whatever things are lovely whatever things are good of good report if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy mediate on these things okay so um just to say this the system that i've showed you just now is a man-made system the rating system is a man-made system it was not created with spiritual matters or god in mind some of these rating systems might consider a particular program safe for a general audience but christians would disagree with this um, assessment so this is where we become media critics the bible gives us a good clear list of uh, that we should ponder of things that we should ponder and think about when we consume visual media it tells us to fill our minds with things that are true and lovely and pure and so on um, when determining what kind of content to watch don't let yourself be guided by the world standard of morals but by God's standards of purity. Can you see how, why we've put this there and why you need to see the man-made thing, but compare and contrast that with the God idea. Now, number four is simply discuss the importance of um, parental involvement in the selection of your media. You need to go in your home um, and find an opportunity where you, where you can do this, discuss it with your parents. I want you to write down a paragraph something that you can share with your club when you're able to do that again. Um, how important is it to involve parents or adults if there's not always parents around um, in the selection of media in things that you watch and do and so on? Um, I just want to... Um, this is just getting in the way again. So we're going on to... This is number five. Discuss the important, uh, discuss the impact of violence and and visual media that they play in shaping what we experience in our communities. Um, nearly two thirds of TV programs contain some physical violence. Most self-involving video games contain some violent content, even those for children. So what do we mean by self-involving? Is that those first-person games, those things where you can engage in a game and then you can play against other people and stuff like that, they in involve in some way some violence. Um, the more we see violence on screen in our recreation, the more we become dulled to the effect of violence. This is just a, a simple fact. So the more we become aware of, or the more we see people shooting at something else or someone else and so on, the more it's not a problem for us anymore. On the age ratings for games and movies, five out of those six categories include violence. So of all those, you see those uh, green, yellow, and red uh, age ratings down there, 
most of them would allow violence. Now, same question as the one that we asked for swearing. In how many of your houses do you allow violence? How, how much violence is there taking place in your homes? Let's see, is there anyone wanting to yeah, let's just uh, let's just have a look, Jimmy, for that and uh, uh, see uh, what, uh, what is happening. Well, well, people are saying none, none at all, Jimmy, in the houses. Is, is what allowed. would happen if there was violence? Uh, if there was violence, uh, the question I think I think that um, well, there is only a few ways to deal with that, I guess. But certainly, majority of people are saying no. Well, no, everybody is saying no. Violence is not allowed. Zero tolerance. Zero. None. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so can you see how um, oftentimes we look at these uh, at movies? Um, if we take out movies, or uh, if we want to, to to download a movie to watch, or if we uh, want to buy a, a video game or something like that. And when we see those numbers, the 3, 7, 12, 16, and 18, and stuff like that, we often feel, oh, but that is a green one, so it should be okay. Um, and, and actually what we should do is remember the stuff that we read about, what these things actually include earlier. And, and we should say, no, 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 we should not really um, go by what those numbers are saying, but we should go by what the Bible tells us. Remember the, the other piece of media that we have, the Bible, it also gives us good ideas of this. A report in the US which examined 37 incidents of targeted school shootings and school attacks found that over half of the attackers demonstrated some interest, that, uh, some interest in violence through movies, video, games, books, and other media. They said extensive research uh, evidence indicates that media violence can contribute to aggressive behavior, numbness to violence, nightmares, and fear of being harmed. Can you imagine that? So, look, there is definitely a connection between uh, the violence we see on media and what happens in real life. In 2012, a worldwide study said, over the past 50 years, a large number of studies conducted around the world have shown that watching violent television, watching violent films, or playing violent video games increases the likelihood for aggressive behavior. Okay, so there's something that we as a community can, can use and learn to help make the world a better place if we and also, also jimmy as you were reading and presenting this uh, section there was a quite a few comments which says hey some of these things give people you know give me a nightmares and some people are struggling and and so quite a few people agreed on that yeah that's absolutely true and uh, you know there's so much problems of late in the last number of years with um, mental uh, mental illness issues and stuff like that. Yeah. And we don't know, much of it could well be coming from the media. Jimmy, somebody just posed a question and asked a question. Well, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, it is, is, is it really bad that if you're 11, but you're watching the 12 rate, right, is it really bad? How would you answer that? <clears throat> I, would, I would say, yes, first of all, you're 11 and that thing says you have to be at least 12. Okay, that's the first thing. But the second thing is we know that um, even if it says 12, it, it already has stuff that for, for an 11-year-old or a 10-year-old or really for a 12-year-old or even a 13 or 14-year-old, um, the stuff that you will be exposed to is not really um, what anyone should be exposed to. Um, some of the stuff that we get exposed to is just because we've become used to it, being exposed to those things over the years. Um, and, um, and, and so, so for instance, I can remember when I grew up, um, it, you would never have thought that the, there would ever be swearing on television when I was a child. When we were, when we were watching television as children, um, swearing would never be even considered, never mind uh, movies where there would be some kind of nudity or anything like that. But nowadays, swearing is almost a must. Um, and uh, here in the UK, what they do is they try and keep that until after eight or no, until after nine in the evenings. But um, but all they do is just simply say, well, this is part of life and this is now normality. Um, but those values that we read of in the Bible, they are values of purity. Um, they are values of um, you know uh, having a better, um, a safer um, way to grow up. Now we want to protect our children from growing up in these violent or wrong situations. Um, but you need to also learn for yourself at this young age that uh, how to look out for these things so that you don't get um, uh, trapped in them. 
Um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, uh, this is now number six. We, I'm jumping all the way to, to, to requirement number six. Follow the current news for three days and evaluate the sources and accuracy of what has been reported. Evaluate on a scale of one to five where, um, where each report falls, one representing pure entertainment and five representing strictly informational news. And prepare and present your findings. Now you'll see there I've put a table for you like that on your worksheet as well. Um, you need to watch, what did we say? We follow the news for three days and evaluate the sources. And of course you can see there one being, what did we say? One is uh, representing pure entertainment and five strictly informational news. So entertainment, news, and what do these uh, uh, sources then provide for us? Make a table like that. And that table, of course, if you can present that to your parents and to your club and so on, will be quite useful. Then number seven, because we've got only 10 minutes, um, search the writings of Alan White for counsel on the wise use of time. Select and read a passage um, and, and then uh, and, this, and discuss this with your group. Now, there is one um, a little passage that comes from a manuscript, which I will just read a few sentences from. The talent of time is precious. Every day it is given to us in trust and we shall be called upon to give an account of it to God. It would be used to God's glory. Um, it is to be used for God's glory. And if we would prolong our lives, if we would gain the life that measures with the life of God, we must um, give the mind pure food. No time should be wasted that might have been used to good account. Jesus Christ is our spiritual touchstone. He reveals the Father. Nothing should be given us as food to the brain that will bring before the mind any mist or cloud in regard to the Word of God. No careless inattention should be shown in regard to the cultivation of the soil of the heart. Now, I've just put one example here. This is a very complicated example. But I want you to find simple examples of, of stuff that Alan White wrote that you can just put down and share with, um, uh, with, with everybody, with your group and so on. You can see I've put the, the, the website for the Ellen White writings um, in the worksheet under number seven. And so it's easier for you to go there and do a search. Um, so there's some more. I'm not going to read all of them. Number eight, keep a detailed record of the amount of time and types of visual media you consume during a four-day period and include the following data in your records. There's five of them, time spent, media rating, the plot or the theme, purity content versus sexual or violent themes, and then fifthly, the message that was presented by the media. And you can see there, I've put those five themes there for you in the top, and day one to four. So you need to go and find uh, uh, some, types of, some types of media and watch them over mm -hmm over the, the over four days and make this table as a as a report for your club and for your parents maybe uh, and something you can share with us as well um, um, online the second part of number eight is of course to prepare a graph or a chart or any kind of media any kind of art of your findings maybe a poster what changes if any do you need to make in your own viewing habits Evaluate how being a Christian should affect your use of media. Be detailed and be honest because that helps you to make good decisions about these things. Taking into account what you have experienced in this honor, stuff we've talked about today so far, share your evaluation in a letter or a report or a journal with your group and maybe with us um, on the comments and stuff in Facebook when you're done with that. That will be quite nice to see. So that is how number eight requirement eight is requirement nine view a media presentation with your family after this uh, interview your family members with the following question so now you can become somebody who does an interview and you can write a report you can even interview them on film use your phone put it on a tripod or something and uh, use something like a microphone or something and interview them like you're an, a, a TV personality and let them tell you what they found about this presentation. 
did they learn anything valuable? Would you watch that presentation again? Why or why not? And and or, and then lastly, did they feel it was a um, it was time well spent while they were watching this? Okay, so that's also a nice report that you can make that you can re present to your club, um, and and then. Oh, where, where am I now? Okay, so I'm just basically going, number 10 is create a speech a presentation or a game that shows you have learned about the critique of visual media while earning this honor. These slides I'm putting here is just basically quickly so you can remember what the 10 requirements were. were. Um, these were, by the way, if, if we go up one, you can see there's different games and things. That those were different types of, um, of, of media. Um, requirement 10 sorry I was a bit there was one slide out of place create a speech presentation this is number 10 or a game that shows what you have learned about the critique of visual media while earning this honor and then share your presentation with the group so a speech 500 words a presentation which would be a photo or a poster or a powerpoint like this one or a video or a vlog or a game you can design a board game or design something on tablet that will be a load of fun um, to, to, to present to your group um, also as part of this honor. Uh, and then basically, uh, there's just a recap, uh, all the different requirements. Um, uh, so you, I'm not going to read through all of them. There you are, basically that's that. Okay, so a lot of stuff in this, in this honor, a lot of involvement, a lot of thinking, a lot of critical thinking. Um, we want you to notice what is media. Uh, one exercise that I always do is when I go anywhere, if I'm in town or somewhere, I walk around and I see something, I say, is that media? Is that media? Oh, that's media. But what type of media is that type of media? And does it teach me something or does it want to draw me into something? Does it want to bring me somewhere? Uh, and, and, and should I stay away or should I think critically about what I see there? Try and do that. Um, Dan, I think that's really about all I have time for. Thank you. Yes, Jimmy, thank you so much for this. Uh, if it's possible, Jimmy, uh, for you to stop sharing your screen, we would just like to say a thank you to uh, you, Jimmy. Uh, uh, and uh, if it's possible, let's give him a big clap, guys. I'm going to unmute everybody. Unmute everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To everybody who is watching uh, this uh, in a Zoom, uh, thank you, Jimmy. It is a not an easy honor. We can say that for sure, and you might not be able to.